Greetings and welcome to today's 10 minute painting lesson. We're going to begin here today, as we generally do, with a large damp square headed brush. Here I'm using a mixture of titanium white and primary red. I'm applying it to the base of the horizon and then I'm blending upwards. From there, I'm jumping over to my palette and grabbing a much darker pigment. This is a mixture of a good amount of primary blue, Mars black, a little bit of primary red, and a little bit of titanium white. I'm essentially applying this to the top of the sky and blending it down until we get to about the middle of the canvas. From there, I'm going to grab much more of that pink that we used for our initial application. I'm going to apply it in between our two pigments, and then I'm going to blend everything out to be fairly smooth. The goal here is to render a soft gradient from one pigment to the next, and this is generally best achieved by using a very soft application with your brush. If we apply a great deal of pressure with our brush, we can kind of move the paint about on either side and create both strokes and various markings in the canvas. This is something we want to avoid and it's easily done by just applying a little bit of pressure when moving our paint about. Now the soft gradient was also fairly easy to achieve because our brush was fairly damp and that extended the wet life of our paint and it allowed us to drag paint much farther than we would have been able to do otherwise. From there, I'm grabbing some Mars black pigment. I'm applying it to the top right and left hand corner of the painting, and I'm blending it down again fairly softly. The goal here is to render a vignette that surrounds the painting, and what it's going to do, it's going to draw the viewer's eye in towards the center of the painting where our main subjects are, where we want the attention of our viewer to be because the eye innately goes to the brightest portion of any piece. So from there, I'm going to jump down into the water. I'm going to grab the same dark pigment that we initially used in the sky because it's going to reflect down there and it's going to keep things fairly cohesive. Then I'm going to grab my medium sized square headed brush, grab a mixture of Mars black burnt umber, apply that to the sand, grab a slightly brighter mixture of that with some additional titanium white, apply that on the edge and create a little bit of a gradient. Now, from there, going to grab some additional pink. We are using a good amount of this in this painting, as you can see. I'm applying this to the unfinished portion of our water, and I'm blending it both back into the water and into the sand as the water will rush up onto the sand. Now, at this point, because of all the blending, the pigments are going to be fairly muted. And if we try to add highlights, it's really just going to continue to blend and get more muted. What we really need to do at this point is let it dry so that we can go back in and add some saturation and some brighter pigments. So in the meantime, I'm jumping over to the right hand side of the painting and I'm going to begin working on the additional land mass. This is going to be done with the same dark pigment that we used initially for the sand. Again, we're keeping things cohesive and we're using colors in multiple areas of the canvas. Now, this painting really teaches us a lot about timing, about patience, because the sky is not done, the water is not done, that landmass is not done, this tree that we're working on right now, it will not be done. We need to let all of it dry so that we can go back and work on it so that things don't get muddy or overwhelming. If you ever find that you're working on a painting and no matter how much pigment you add to it, it's just not getting brighter, it's not getting more vibrant, it just seems harder and harder to work with. That's probably because we have too much wet paint on the canvas and this is a great lesson to teach you how to deal with that and apply certain layers, let them dry and then come back to them. So with that said, we just went back to the sky. We took some primary yellow, we took some titanium white, and we began to work in an area where I think we want our sun to be. I'm drawing it in fairly lightly right now. We will blend that out, but we're going to add some yellow to that area. That yellow is going to blend with the pink and render a bit more of an orange, which is great because it is such a natural sunset color. Though the sunset, it isn't a generic sunset. It's one that has much more in it, as you can see. It isn't just yellow and orange and red. It's yellow, orange, 
orange, red, pink, purple, some blues as well. And it's just going to be much more captivating for that reason. What can be tricky is balancing it all, but through this layering process, it becomes much more manageable. So here I'm going back down and I'm adding some highlights into the water. I'm able to do this now because that pigment that we previously applied has dried. And when you're applying those highlights to the water, I'd highly implore you to add your new pigments fairly sharply to the edge of the water that is closest to us. Then blend it back and allow it to dissipate as it moves into the distance. This is going to make it look like the water is rising up and water is passing, or rather light is passing through it. It's going to give it a much more three-dimensional look and make it look like it actually is carrying some light within it. Now, from there, you could see that I was going back up into the sky. I was brightening that area with some additional titanium white, some primary yellow, and I'm just slowly building it up in the same way that I am the waves down here. It's also worth noting that when you're working on your waves, all of the foreground should have fairly sharp defined waves. You see a light area, you see a dark area, but as we get farther and farther away, they need to get smaller and smaller until you don't see the highlights, you don't see the darker areas, because the human eye naturally can't see all of those things that far away. And it would look very awkward if it was still as hyper detailed in the background. Generally, you want the background to be a little bit more simple as it will all blend together. You'll get a lot more reflected light. You want the foreground to be much more saturated, much more detailed, and much more sharp. Speaking of creating sharper subjects, here we're working on our palm tree. I'm using the smaller square headed brush because it does have that very sharp edge, which is fantastic for this sort of foliage. And I start with the main middle line and then I work my way out. Now I did use a good amount of water on my brush there. It allowed me to work with very fine lines. Otherwise I probably would have ended up with a very choppy looking foliage where it was fairly grainy where we'd see the tooth of the canvas. If you find that you're applying very delicate little applications, try using some additional water in your mixtures. It's going to make the pigment much more thin, so you might have to do a couple of layers, but you're going to be able to get those very delicate, sharp applications that you want. Now here you can see that I'm going back into the palm tree and I added an additional leaf kind of fixed everything up. And that is also a good lesson to take away from this lesson. When you're kind of considering adding something else but you don't want to overdo it, do the piece to the extent you know you want it, then let it sit for two, three minutes. Go and work on something else. Then come back to it when you have more of an opinion on it. You don't have to do everything immediately. You can let things dry and then come back. And generally, I find you'll end up with a much stronger painting through that process rather than just throwing in all of the paint. So that's what I'm doing. I added some foliage and I thought, you know, do I want more? I'm not really sure. So I went, I worked on something else, and then I came back to it. And that is a reoccurring theme throughout this painting. And it's also a great benefit to kind of working on different segments and then going back and adding the highlights as we're doing. Here you can see that I'm adding some additional titanium white to the highlights of the pink. Again, make sure that the edge of the water that is closest to us is sharp and then it blends backwards. I'm still using that smaller square headed brush for this process because it does have that very sharp edge and it can carry a good amount of paint as well. A lot of people like to use round headed brushes or liner brushes for detailed work. I however feel that they kind of give everything a feathered effect and they make things look a little bit too soft. So that's why I like to use the smaller square headed brushes and the corners of the smaller square headed brushes for the more detailed areas. Now here, because the water has dried a good amount, I am able to go back in and add some additional pink and really create some beautiful highlights from this sunset here. Now the painting is coming to a close here, but as you can see, we're rarely ending up with something quite beautiful. I'm going to switch over to a smaller round headed brush fairly soon and add a single cloud to the sky with a pink just to again work with the cohesive nature of the painting, grabbing more of those colors that we've used before 
and create something that's fairly relaxed, a single cloud in the sky. But there we have it, that is essentially our 10 minute version. Now, as per usual, I did have some additional ideas and if you really wanted to make the piece a little bit more dynamic and interesting, you could add some additional clouds as I'm doing here. So I'm kind of working in a Z pattern back and forth down into the sun and allowing it to get larger and larger as we work our way upwards. Then I'm expanding upon the palm trees. Again, it's all about kind of trying something, letting it sit in your mind and then coming back to it when you feel like it's really what you want. Now, these clouds are also great because they can act as leading lines and direct you back into the painting. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the extra information, the extra couple minutes there. We had it our 10 minute version, our 13 minute version. I truly hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners. In it, we talk about how to blend acrylic paints, which brushes to use, how to get varying colors and render depth, all of the essentials, all of the things you need to know about before you jump into your first painting. If you liked this lesson and you'd like more of it, more things like it, but perhaps longer where you also get to see my color palette over on my Patreon, it is exactly that. I offer hour-long lessons, you do get to see my color palettes, you do get to see what I'm mixing with water, and all of the things we don't have time for in this lesson. There are also a lot of really nice seasons up there right now. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed. I will see you next Saturday. And above all, as always, stay creative.